So when, once kids are familiar uh, with the base 10 box and they've had time to explore, um, develop generalizations about base 10 blocks, and they're comfortable with it, then what I like to do is that I like to start setting boundaries and start working with writing down numbers um, and developing place value concepts. Now in front of me here is um, it's, it's a base 10 chart um, and again they have like the visual representations of flats, hundreds, rods which are tens and units which are ones and you'll notice like there are, there are um, lines um, kind of separating the, the place values and you know when I, when I um, introduce the concept to kids I just introduce it as um, you know, each of the base 10 blocks have a certain place. Uh, units belong in the units column, rods belong in the rods column, and flats belong in the fl uh, flats column. Very simple, very straightforward. So if, if I'm working with kids, you know, I start with the units and, and, I'll, and I'll ask them, you know, how many units do we have? They'll count and they'll say three. Right? So just write down three and um, what I might do is I might just take that away wipe this off um, put down maybe two rods and and I'll ask them how many rods do I have now how many blocks do I have you know how many flats how many rods how many units and um, they might say, well, no flats, two rods. Um, and they might not say anything about units. So you just want to ask them how many units do we have. And they might say n none, zero. Right? And just put zero units. And then what you'll do is, again, you'll take away the rods. You'll erase. I want to use an actual eraser instead of your fingers. And then you'll do the same thing with the flats. And we'll put, maybe we'll put like two down over here. And, and again, what we'll do is we'll ask them, um, how many flats do we have? And they'll say one, two. So we have two flats. And then we'll ask them how many rods, no rods, how many units, zero units. So just get them familiar with, with, with um, the idea of using the mat. And when you're using the mat, you're, you're, you're writing down how many flats you have, how many rods you have, how many units you have. And, um, and you know, saying that the number is 200. Um, and that's a very basic step um, before you go any further into addition or subtraction. I feel like just having kids practice with this is very important. Um, the next thing that we can do after this is we can practice giving we can practice giving them numbers. So what we'll do is now that we've done a little intro, you know, we'll put a couple of flat, a couple of rods, a couple of units, and, you know, we'll just start, you know, how many units do we have? We have three units. How many rods do we have? We have one rod. How many flats do we have? We have one flat. Alright, and the number is 113. 113. Very basic. Um, and now what you might what you might might want to do with kids um, is take turns making numbers. Now, once kids have started to um, to play with play with the chart and, and explore numbers and make numbers, it, I think an interesting activity for kids to do is um, to make up numbers and have you know adults play along and try to guess that number on the base 10 chart and um, likewise you know have 
um, you know, the the adults make a number and have the kid, you know, have the have the child or student, you know, write the number out and and um, try to guess the number in that way. Now, these kind of activities, you know, I, I probably wouldn't do too long. Um, you know, just introducing the kid to it for a few minutes, maybe five, ten minutes. I think anything longer than that, you'll probably see the kid start to lose interest. Um, so I think just getting the student to, to um, recognize the use of the base 10 chart, um, I think that's important, especially when we start doing addition and subtraction. You know, so they're starting to get familiarized with, you know, where to place um, the units, the rods, and the flats, and, you know, how we write down numbers. Um, now, when we create these numbers, when we, when we start working with uh, the base 10 chart, there is an important rule um, that I forgot to mention, but it's something that really should be emphasized to kids at this point when we're first introducing the chart. It's what I like to call the trade-in rule. Um, and the trade-in rule is something that we'll, we'll explore uh, in, in later lessons. But basically the trade-in rule is um, once you have 10 uh, of any one piece, you trade into uh, the next higher item. So for example, um, if we have, let's see, if we have 10 units, right, what we, what we do with, when we have 10 units is what we'll do is we'll trade in those 10 units for one rod. Or if we had 10 rods, what, we'll, what we do, let's see, this is 4, 8, 10. So we have 10 rods, what we do is we trade in these 10 rods for one flat. We'll put that in the flat column. Uh, the reason why I mention it now is, um, you know, sometimes when you're making numbers, you know, kids will take a whole bunch of units, right, and they'll throw it in, and, you know, and, and, and while, you know, there are a whole bunch of units, it, it just, it won't work um, with what we're trying to do. So that's just something to, to kind of, um, have in mind when you're working with your units, rods, and flats. So if it does come up, you can, you know, you can either um, have them use less units, less rods, and less flats for each, or what you could do is you could tell them there's a rule, um, you have to use less than 10, um, 10 units, rods, or flats in each. You know, but I wouldn't get too much into it. Um, because there's a rule later, and we'll play a game that will really teach them um, the trade-in rule.